Greetings everyone. Today I want to talk about something a little bit different. As I've been developing tools for 3D pixel art with Jobster, we found an opportunity to share our work and profit some money to keep developing new stuff. I'm talking about creating assets out of tools we've made and publishing them on the Unity Assets Store. In this video, I will go over how we came about assets for game development, packaging tools and converting this into an asset. Finally, I will talk about what overhead goes into publishing and lessons I've learned. If you are interested in certain parts, I'll leave tie stamps in the description. The first problem with any business is finding an idea and a market suitable for it. We lucked out a bit, as a passion project of ours had lacking information online and even less competition on sale. This inspired us to try out the waters in the store and start working on our first asset. We created and published one of our earlier components needed for our niche art style and credit to Jobster who really pulled through with the majority of the innovation and development. We were really happy with the scope of this tool. The pixel camera system had a well-defined problem to solve and the solution wouldn't creep out of hand. As we didn't single out its use for 3D pixel art, it was positive to see that the tool could also be applied to scenarios other than our specific art style, which would guide us in later projects. Developing this asset surprised me, however, on how much work it actually takes to publish something for others, compared to just having tools of your own. All the testing, writing documentation and creating marketing material adds up and makes pressing the final publishing button hard. We learned a lot of things the hard way. After our first release, we got contacted by customers a lot with their help requests for setting up the asset. This was at first a bit confusing for us, but after thinking about it for a bit, it was clear that we had to make our asset documentation and setup guide more clear. We cleared up the setup guide and added support for the requested built-in pipeline. After this update, in addition of another requested feature, our customer support channels fell silent. He felt happy with the results, as this work had paid off and the experience for our customers was seemingly better. The importance of listening to users was blatantly obvious at this point. However, after stabilizing this asset, we were looking at expanding our portfolio. We had a lot of tools developed, but still a lot of work to do. My initial idea of releasing our next asset was tools to create the shader people need for this art style. People need clouds running over objects, outlines that are one pixel wide, and a tool ramp that is preferably configurable. I started off work and we created a package where these sub shaders were included and an example shader that I had combined with it. This would have provided a plug and play element and a reference to create your own. After some time, some regret of not doing the best job made me want to do some large changes. An oddly specific tool like this would be useful for some, but it was not a complete package that people really wanted to use. At the same time, I was polishing my tools for instancing for the new scene video I was making, and we received an inquiry about our demo scenes that I showcased here. It became quite obvious to me that expanding the shader package to have tools to create the environments we used was what people wanted. So I started polishing these instancing tools that are used to create the grass and trees seen in our environments. As we had learned with our camera asset, although this tool was good to use in 3D pixel art, we believe people could use it in other scenarios too. We decided to market it as just a stylized environment tool. The package had a use case as a plug and play solution or to use as a reference for expanding your own 3D tools and environments. Especially what I found useful is converting free 3D models into stylized objects, as our goal is to make creating 3D environments easier programmatically. My initial solutions for instancing were suboptimal with a bad interface. The backend structure worked, but the architecture could have been better and more clear. I changed up the structure to split functionalities and changed the interface to be more easily configured for unique scenarios. For people who just want to plug and play, I added two implementations for instancing on terrains 
and meshes with the possibility to only instance on sub meshes. The other problem worth solving for instancing is what shaders they can use. I used Unity's built in shaders for reference when I created a setup shader for getting the data of an instance. This provided the ability to create custom shaders in Shader Graph for instanced objects. After the conversion had been done, there is overhead that is required to find success on the asset store. First off, I document the above solution and add it to the package. I go over how the asset works and how to use it as a plug and play solution. After this, I go more in depth over the interfaces and variables we have provided so users can get the results they need. During development, I've been testing out our features and looking at edge conditions, but when the package is complete, I look at importing the projects into different Unity versions and trying out the components together. If issues are found, I fix them and try again. This ensures that the package we release will work within our guidelines and with our setup guide. Another important part of publishing is material that you can use to market the asset. Showcasing the features and possible use cases gives certainty to users that these are tools they really need. Last but not least, after the asset is released, we try to provide customer support through channels provided in the documentation. This is something we have found extremely useful for gathering data on how to improve assets later on and provide customers with the help they need. Before starting this, I thought that finding an idea to follow through on would require a great bit of luck but instead, I've come to believe that stumbling into something seems much more practical. Do stuff, and you will find out that you are luckier than you would have thought. When the users of the code you write expands outside of yourself, the quality in interfaces become much more significant. Hold yourself up to a higher standard, and your future self will thank you later on. Keep the scope of your assets limited to the problems you are trying to solve. There often come situations in development where a week or even a month long tangent offers itself up to you, but focusing on creating a minimally viable product limits yourself to make delivering of something much more certain. Although I don't have a lot of experience in business, some of the more fun things for me have been the ability to make actionable business decisions. I've learned to appreciate the effort and thought people put into this side of the project instead of just focusing on the technical product. Designing what goes in the package, for example, from a marketing perspective has been eye-opening. In the end, something I feel like we failed at was getting reviews for our asset. It seems to be when people are satisfied with our work, they just use it, and only in cases where they have problems, they feel the need to review. If anyone has any ideas on how to prompt people to engage, I would like to learn about it more. Comment what you think of these different types of videos. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe. Bye.